Notre Dame is number one. Notre Dame with a miracle win is a He's going again. Notre Dame and score. Well, you guys came to the right uh, media session because if you were here the last couple of days, I was not uh, very talkative. Um, we were kind of in that area of we were out of camp, but we were still a little bit too far out to see Navy. Um, and so we, uh, we had a couple of practices that uh, I didn't think we had the attention, the detail that I liked. But today was, uh, was much better. You could see that the focus on Navy now has uh, begun to seep into our players. And it, it, got, it got the feel today that you know, we're getting ready for Navy. Um, so pleased with the work out there today. Uh, we'll have another um, practice tomorrow, which will still focus on our Navy preparation. Saturday, we'll go into the stadium and have, have our dress rehearsal uh, uh, game without the game itself. Uh, we'll cover all of the potential situations that could occur uh, in, in our opener. And, uh, you know, we've got some young guys that are, that are going to be first time uh, participants. So we want to kind of really duplicate everything. We're going we're gonna to have our morning meetings. We're going to have a uh, team meal. We're going to walk over to the stadium. We're going to do all those things. And um, that, that will be Saturday. Uh, Sunday, we'll, um, we'll, uh, we'll lift the team. And, and then we're in the game week, you know, with a bonus day on Monday. So um, that's a little bit about practice, where we are. And uh, we'll open it up to, uh, to any questions. We'll start with Angelo back here. And any questions? Do you have, have you named a starter yet? How did you know? How did you know? Uh, we have. It's Everett Golson. Uh, he'll be our starter. And um, I wanted to make sure that you got that question in. So thank you. You, covered, you covered the bet. What made you come to that decision? You know, a lot of practice, uh, lots of film, lots of evaluation. Uh, you know, he won the job. Um, Andrew did a great job, made great improvement. Really, really pleased with um, the, the, the progress of both those young men. It's, uh, it was good to see. And uh, it was tough. You know, it was a tough decision, but, but, but Everett clearly won the, the starting job, and, and uh, he'll be the starter against Navy. So this is not a one and one A. It's number one and number two. You anticipate going? Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Everett's the starter, and, and uh, you know if uh, things go the way we're we're planning it, you know he, he would play uh, he'd play the whole game. Brian, if things don't go the way you want them, I'm not a half empty guy. <laughs> I know I'm a not. half full guy. But but have you seen enough of Everett in August and the improvement in him that I hate to use the term short leash, but that you're going to kind of roll with maybe a little no, bit. No, I think we prepared, Eric, the, the offense to, to suit a first-time starter. You know, he's got four seasons of competition remaining. And so, you know, anytime you're starting somebody with four seasons of competition, you know he's, he, he's going to learn more, he's going to experience more as he plays. But, you know, we also have to make sure that we put him in good positions, you know, and, and uh, I, think, uh, I think you'll see that on, uh, on game day. How do you react to the news? How did Andrew react to the news? Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about the, you know how our guys react. It, it's just like anything else. You know, the, they're both competitive guys. And, and uh, if listen, if if you don't want to be a starter here at Notre Dame, you should be doing something else. Uh, that's as much as I'd give you on that. How many reps will Andrew see just security-wise leading up to week one? My, my general breakdown is, is 70-30, but it could change. There might be some plays that I want to see more with, with uh, Andrew, maybe, than, than, than I would with Everett. So, you know, generally it's been about a 70-30 breakdown. But that's, you know, I get out there and I get a feel for maybe a play, and I might repeat it four or five times. So to have a hard and fast rule, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to hold myself to that. But that's, that's kind of generally where it ends up being. Brian, removing kind of the first game from the equation, is this a year more than your first three where you kind of see the offense evolving and do maybe something almost not completely different, but so many different looks of packages and tight ends, receivers, that it's kind of depth, but not proven depth yet? 
Oh, sure. You know, you're starting, you know, with uh, Devaris Daniels and Chris Brown, you know, two guys that are going to play a lot for us uh, on the perimeter that are first time starters, you know, and then, you know, George Atkinson didn't play very much at the running back. He, you're going to see a lot of him. Troy Nicholas, you know, I could go on and on. So Everett Golson, <laughs> you know, there's four or five guys right there that are that are, you know, going to be impactful in, in the game. So, yeah, certainly there's there's going to be there's going to be some learning there. Uh, but the one thing we don't have a lot of time on is is, is that curve. You know, we got to come out running uh, and doing our thing right away. You had a change up package for Andrew like you did last year. No, nope. he'd run our offense, and, and that's the beauty of you know being able to go into camp and and really try to develop both those quarterbacks. So uh, they're both capable of running anything that we call. Brian, last year when you announced Dane, you said you hoped. Or you anticipated he would be the starter for all 13. Is this sort of the same mentality with Everett? Oh, yeah. I, I don't think you go in any any year, Brian, and think that, uh, boy, I want to make a change at halftime. You know, you, you, you want to be able to stick with a guy and build continuity. And, you know, especially with a guy that, that's got four seasons of competition, you know, you want to build on that. How important, well, I guess maybe it's self explanatory, but what kind of stability, when you have stability at quarterback, how does that help your offense? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it just I think it brings up everybody else. You know, we just talked about some young kids that are going to be playing the first time. Put a veteran quarterback in there kind of calms everybody down. You know what I mean? And, and takes away some of those apprehensions. So uh, a veteran quarterback obviously allows you to do that. We don't have a veteran quarterback yet, uh, but um, we're very, very confident in his ability uh, to go and lead us. I think some of the things that I really liked from Everett his poise uh, was, was, was really outstanding. Um, great vision down the field. So those things are really positive, even if you don't have a lot of experience. Brian, at your other coaching stops, you've had some success, big success, team success with first year starters at quarterback. Yeah. What's kind of been the key in those situations? Well, I, I think, you know, if I go back and, and look at Central Michigan with Dan LaFever, he was a guy that could extend a play. You know, if, 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 if you look at Zach Kolaris, you know, a guy who could extend a play. Um, you, you're, you're, you're finding out that the coaching's not that good, but the player's much better than the coaching. <laughs> and so to have that quarterback that can extend, I was kidding a little bit about that, and you guys didn't take up on that. So I guess I understand where I stand on this. So each one of them, each one of them had that ability to extend plays. Everett has some of those same traits. Has anybody gained any distinction or separation at the corner spot opposite Bennett at this point? Yeah, Kaveri, Kaveri Russell's our starter. Yeah. What has enabled him to step to the forefront so soon? You know, there's always a kid or two in a class. This is my 25th year in college. There's always a couple of kids that, you, you know, it just they have it, you know. He's, he's just um, – it's a great kid. He's so confident in his ability. He's extremely athletic. Um, he's picked it up so quickly. Um, he's, he's still got a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. I'm not ready to put him in the Hall of Fame. But he's a kid that really picked it up quickly. And it was a comfortable transition for him. He's a really smart kid. Um, all those things really pointed uh, in his favor of being able to pick up the position quickly. Will he be playing the boundary side? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I think we're going to have to have some flexibility there, uh, depending on who we're playing, you know, what the circumstances are. You know, if, uh, if, if uh, Robert Woods is, is into the boundary, Bennett Jackson might be into the boundary. You, you know what I mean? So I, I think game plans would determine it, but, you know, I think you'll see Bennett at the field as well. And, and I think that's going to be a kind of a game plan week to week situation uh, because Bennett can do both. And with Nick Martin, is he almost like your next man in at every position along the line except center? No, I wouldn't say that that's accurate. I would say Nick is probably the first tackle in. Connor Hanratty is the first guard in. And Mike Golick is the next center in. So you can kind of position that. And then I think the next guy is Ronnie Stanley if we, if we had to go to another tackle. When Tate Nichols comes back, does... He's got to go compete against Ronnie and, and, and Nick, you know, to get in that rotation. Would Nick go back to guard in that? I think we'd answer that when we get there. But right now, in answering your question, that's how it would roll out. 
we get to next week. <laughs> I'll get to next week. That's kind of how it would roll out now, though. Well, we haven't heard a lot about Tony Springman in camp. Yeah. How much will he be on the field and what roles exactly? I, I think he's going to be on the field. I think you're going to see a, a guy that uh, he can play two positions. He can play the nose. He can play the four technique for us. Um, he's done a nice job for us. So he's definitely part of our depth. He'll be rolling out there. Um, He'll be playing some football for us. We're pleased with Tony. Yes, he did. Uh, Brian Radigan, uh, our team um, physician, uh, performed that surgery yesterday. He felt like it was, um, you know, a pretty standard surgery. He's recovering, and uh, hopefully, we'll see him up and around tomorrow. Brian, how about the punt returns? Have you sifted that down to? Yeah, Devontae Neal will start as our punt returner. George Atkinson will be our kickoff return man. And how about your depth at, outside, at the drop linebacker? Are you pretty feeling pretty good about Romeo and Procease there, or is Shelton yeah, Ro Romeo is really the, the number two there. Young, athletic. He's going to be a star. He's going to be a great player. He's just you know a, a young kid, uh, but really love his length, uh, athleticism. He's our number two right now, and you know as you know we 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 use that as a nickel position as well on third down. Brian, whenever it's in there, I mean, is he the kind of guy that runs this offense? Do you want the way this offense to run? That kind of player? That well, we're running, we're running the offense that fits the players that we have. And so I would say in answering your question, the, the, the kind of style of offense that we see uh, will be the one that he's most comfortable running. And so um, as, as I think was alluded to earlier, a lot more personnel groupings, um, Maybe not as, as fast of a tempo, uh, but we're, we're utilizing multiple personnel groupings as that form of attacking the defense, if you will. You can attack the defense through tempo. You can attack defenses through multiple personnel groupings. I think we're leaning more towards the multiple groupings um, with, with Everett. Brian, does, this, with the, does Everett move this program closer <coughs> to, quote unquote, your offense, what, what you're about as a head coach and a play caller? You know, I've always been about, you know, scoring points on offense, you know, you know playing aggressively, uh, spreading the field. And, and this offense that we're running is the same one that I've run at different ventures in my career at different times. And it just fits really well, the grouping of personnel that we have on at hand. As you know, we've got some really good tight ends <laughs> and we've got to get them on the field. So uh, Everett can, can definitely playing the kind of offense that I want to play aggressively, uh, spreading the field, being aggressive, pushing the ball vertically, as well as controlling the line of scrimmage. So without question, we would not have named him the starter unless we felt like this was the next step towards you know, moving our program. You were pretty high on him last week about turnovers, like you know, one pick and 120 He's got something. three now. Three now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask how, the, how good has he been over the last week in that? Got a I thought he got a little. Um, I don't know, bored maybe is not the right word, but you know we got into those couple of days that I alluded to, and I thought he lost a little bit of his focus. The game is really, really hard, and young kids have got to stay focused. And if he stays focused, he's not going to he's not going to be that guy that turns the football over. Just lastly, to name him today, I mean, is some of that just to let him try it on, see what it's like to for everyone to know that you're the starting quarterback opposed. No, to just get away from the distractions of the questions about that going into game week, you know, because we kind of wrapped this thing up on Saturday. So, and this was the schedule. I think this was the only time that I was going to be talking to you folks. So we just, it just worked right on the calendar. And we were ready to make the decision too. Real quick on Chris Brown, I mean, has he continued that move up into the rotation? How do you see He's this? not a complete player yet, but boy, he can run. And so, uh, we, we, we like his speed on the field. We're a faster football team. It'll be the fastest team that we've had with him on the field uh, with different pieces. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be part of what we do. Daniels, obviously, is, is a guy with great speed. So we feel like we're, we're a, a fast football team with those guys on the field. The Brian Lewis on Danny Spahn. Making progress every day. I, I don't have an update on that. You know, he was out doing run flex today. He's been feeling really good. I think we've just been taking it slowly with him, 
but we haven't taken any steps back with, with his progress. You don't know when you no, I don't have a timetable on that. I'll, I'll, I'll check and we can probably talk about it next week. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.